This is one of the studies uh, that I like to highlight when we talk about the therapy. We talk about cytoreductive therapy as something that is standard practice for high-risk patients, but many of us in a community setting are nervous when we see, let's say, 45-year-old uh, gentleman with high platelets of a, of a million or 1.2 million and say, wow, that is not a good number. You are at a high risk of a blood clot. We should treat that patient with the cytoreductive therapy. This is a study not uh, uh, long ago published in one of the leading journals, randomizing patients uh, between age of 40 and 59 that were with ET uh, with a high platelets up to a million and a half without the high risk features. And in this setting, randomization that was between a hydroxyurea or, or nothing, just observation, proved the point that the normalization of the platelets, which was accomplished with hydroxyurea, did not provide any substantial benefit. In other words, high platelets up to a million and a half in patients that are otherwise low risk, less than 60, no history of thrombosis, does not really provide the benefit. So one more point that I like to make here, uh, which is perhaps important for every practice is uh, the issue of a prog progression from uh, ET to myelofibrosis. Now we all say that there should be no fibrosis in a bone marrow at the time of diagnosis uh, for patients with ET. Uh, and, and that's correct. They may have some grade of fibrosis uh, later on in their life, if you repeat the bone marrow after 10 or, or 20 years, but some presence of fibrosis on its own, it's not good enough to call the patient transformed. As you see on this slide, there needs to be, in addition to change to high-grade fibrosis, anemia or look erythroblastic picture or big spleen or uh, systemic symptoms or high LDH, all the known factors that are part of diagnostic criteria for myofibrosis. So this is one of the practical points here that later on in life of ET patients, yes, there might be some fibers in the bone marrow and maybe these patients are at the risk of transformation to uh, myofibrosis, but they are not yet transformed because you need to fulfill those factors here to really call that patient transformed. So that's the other endpoint of, of uh, the life of patients with ET that worry about progression to myofibrosis that may happen in a smaller proportion of the patients, perhaps 5 to 10% of the patients do that. 